Over the years of child rearing, my wife and I thankfully agreed on most things. But one area where she and I diverged was bedtime. For me, sleeping was no big deal. But for her, an early childhood educator, bedtimes were ironclad and serious business. Well, recent research on the purpose and value of sleep would suggest that, once again, she was right. It seems that sleep is vital to both memory and learning, and it appears that America's kids aren't getting enough of it. More on that later. Harvard sleep expert Alan Hobson says, quotes, For years, researchers saw sleep as nothing but an annihilation of consciousness. Now we know different, close quotes. What researchers know today is relatively a recent development. Modern sleep theory dates back only to 1952 when a University of Chicago grad student, Eugene Nazarinsky, decided to hook up his eight-year-old son to a bunch of brain electrodes just to see what was going on in the brain. To alert him when the boy waked, he also hooked up the eyes. What he discovered and subsequently published with his faculty advisor in 1953 was named Rapid Eye Movement, or REM Sleep. Years later, this odd unconscious state, somewhere between light and deep sleep, was described by modern-day sleep researcher Ross Levin, now armed with sophisticated imaging equipment as, quotes, neurochemically like the 4th of July, incredibly active, much more so than when you're awake. Researchers now split sleep into four parts. Light sleep, true sleep, deep sleep, and REM sleep. When we first drop off to sleep, it's light. We're literally half awake, typically for five to 15 minutes. Our eyes are closed, but we're easily awakened. But between 10 and 30 minutes of lying down, most of us move into true sleep. Our breathing slows and it's regular and the heart rates and the body temperatures drop. And over the next hour, we sink into a deep sleep as our brain waves slow and our heart rates drop to their lowest levels. While we may appear inactive, inside there's work being done. Hormones are secreting, muscles, bones, and tissues are regenerating. An hour or two into a night's rest, most walk back up the ladder quickly through true and light sleep for a run of REM sleep. At this point, our brain is most active. Our eyes are darting around under our closed lids, breathing and blood pressure varies, but our muscles are paralyzed. We dream sometimes wild dreams, and we'd actually like to act on them, but we can't because our muscles are paralyzed. Over the course of a night's sleep, we repeat the cycle some four times. In total, we spend about a quarter of the time in a mixture of light or REM sleep, about half of the time in true sleep, and a quarter of the time in deep sleep. These different types of sleep occur at different times, and they are now believed to serve different purposes. For example, we go in and out of REM sleep four or so times a night. And with each episode, it lasts longer, with the longest stretch typically occurring an hour or so near the end of sleep. Thus, if you cut off sleep early, by rising an hour or two early, you can lose more than 50% of your REM sleep for that night. Researchers in 1994 discovered that REM sleep is critical to remembering all sorts of learnings. During REM sleep, it appears that the brain separates, bundles, and stores facts away in an organized fashion so that they can be easily analyzed and retrieved later. REM learning is felt to be especially critical for position recognition, like learning grammar or playing games that require strategic moves and forward thinking. In addition, through dreams and other processes during REM sleep, we appear to discard useless facts. Now, in contrast, deep sleep, which generally occurs in the first third of the evening, is felt to be critical for recall of memorized facts. Real sleep, that middle level of consciousness, which is spread more evenly throughout the night, but still it's weighted more heavily toward the early morning hours, is believed to be critical in learning all sorts of motor tasks, from managing a musical instrument to executing the perfect jump shot or swimming turn. There is clearly still a great deal to learn about sleep, but here's what we know for sure. Sleep is an active rather than a passive event.
tied to memory and learning. Not all sleep is the same. There are different types of sleep which appear to serve different functions in the acquisition of knowledge. Getting enough sleep during the night is essential. All-nighters rob the individual of time to organize and categorize what was just memorized. The risk? Losing all of that hard work. So, it turns out that my wife was right again. Recent reports say that 15 million school-aged children in America are suffering from inadequate sleep. Studies also show that these children perform less well in their tests. They have less recall and responsiveness. They have more depressive feelings, and they perform less well in coordination and motor activities. The bottom line? Kids need a good night's sleep to learn, and it's the parents' job to make sure they get it. For Health Commentary, I'm Mike McGee.